Welcome to the Bob and Cancer Show. Hi, I'm Bob Cavoyan. Greetings. Welcome. Welcome to week four. Woo! On our last episode, Bob was kidnapped by a mad scientist who was trying to poison him <laughs> and cut him in half with a laser beam. But it didn't happen. He's nope. alive. He's well. He is very I'm well. I'm doing all he right. Is so very well. That's exciting. I it's, can't believe it's week four already. I mean, it's the end of We're starting saying, week yeah. five tomorrow. Tomorrow week five begins for, with my final chemotherapy. Tomorrow. And then uh, I hey, have... Hey, do you think that we get to ring a bell or anything? When I'm done with radiation, yeah, probably. Do you ring a bell when you're finished with uh, chemotherapy? Chemotherapy. I haven't heard any bells while we're, have, while we've been up there. That's not a good sign, is yeah. it? Never uh, mind. No. Forget I, I said anything. I think that's only if you tip. Tip. <laughs> <laughs> they will ring a bell. Oh, like Hooters. Is yes. it Hooters that does? Well, or uh, different places. Uh, you know. <laughs> different but if, places. If, you know, if cancer centers were more like a Hooters, a lot of people would, would, wouldn't mind going there. It wouldn't be that dreadful. <laughs> no, no. Actually, it hasn't been dreadful at all. You've made it pleasant, I'm, as pleasant as you can, right? Uh, I am s- still overwhelmed by how, I guess, easy this has been. Yeah, I don't know how we at all relate to people who are going to be listening to this with a potential diagnosis or a family member because Bob's doing so well, I almost... I actually accused them last week of using a placebo. I she said, actually asked the doctor. We meet with the radiation doctor <laughs> every Wednesday. Right. And she, Becky says, are you sure you're hitting the right spot? Well, I, and I don't think he was offended or anything, but this same fella said when we first met him a month ago, you're going to hate me in week three. Yep. Well, okay, but we didn't. I didn't hate him in week three, and I don't hate him in week four. Week four I think ended it's with crazy. still very... Well, I, I think you're lucky. I mean, it's so different for different people. Sure yes. it is. But I thought about this coming today. The, uh, the lesson here is early detection. Absolutely. Go to True. your doctor. This was all part of my annual physical. Yep. I have a chest x-ray every year. And in this year's x-ray, they saw these spots mm-hmm. uh, and they took action. And we found the cancer, found it early. And uh, that's why we're doing this podcast. Right. So it, it's pretty incredible when you find it early. They say it's, it is much easier oh, than, absolutely. than when you are, I guess, diagnosed with a stage four cancer. Or with symptoms that are debilitating already before yes. you even start. And it's difficult to corral the cancer. And, and it's, uh, it's probably a longer process than just five chemo treatments. It might be more, uh, might be longer radiation. We don't know all this. We're making don't, this I'm part making, out. I'm just guessing because mine <laughs> no, has been so, mine has been very easy. It's been uneventful other than the daily grind of going for two people who are retired and like sleeping in and lounging in our yeah, robes. This, is, and, this has been a job for the last uh, month and I still yeah. have another week and a half to go. Yeah. But it, it is, you know, you have to be there on time and <laughs> yeah. you, know, you, you, you getting to know a lot of the personnel there which is very nice a lot of wonderful people there yeah and uh it is a job but you're right wit about early detection and i'm not sure i mean we've all heard those commercials and public service announcements and people saying early detection saves lives but how do you how do you get people to really hear it maybe this podcast maybe that's what this podcast is going to be for it could be but it's a you know if you have an annual an exam, physical yeah. exam, chances are things like this will pop up. Well, I think a lot of people don't have an annual physical. Well, Do you? What, are the, what are the numbers, Whit? You know things like this. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, in my profession, I do financial He's planning. He's an x-ray tech. Right. Oh, I'm sorry, wrong. And occasionally it involves people buying life insurance. And I'm shocked. Someone will say, well, I haven't seen the doctor in seven or eight years. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. Which is, me. in a way, it's good. They're healthy. They feel healthy. Sure. But an annual physical is is amazing. Yeah. Oh gosh, what and most could people especially at fifty and older, right? Yes. And most people don't go to a doctor unless they're feeling bad, right? And that's when some of these cancers are detected because they're so far along that they are actually showing symptoms. I found this early, and I had no symptoms whatsoever. 
You still don't. I don't. It's I'm still stunned by what's going on here. You know, uh, I was raised by a mom. Well, a mom and a dad. My dad was pretty regular about going to the doctor, but my mother was not. No, she wasn't. And she <laughs> she never she lived to eighty, almost eighty five years old, and she never had a mammogram. You know why? No, no why? She she thought, and then she just had wacky ideas. And I love her. Today's Mother's Day. I sure miss her. But she really thought that when they put your boob up in that clampy machine that squishes it down, yeah. that if you did have cancer, it's now spread through your whole body. Because it squeezed it out. Because <laughs> it squeezed it out. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> so I always thought it was like she, a, a cartoon. Once they squish it, it right. stays that way. <laughs> oh, no. See, I should have used that one on her. But she never had a mammogram. And so I was raised in this kind of idea that, well, I don't need to go to the doctor for that. What's he going to do? He ain't going to help, you know. We just all, and all of my siblings and everything, we all kind of had that. I believe her quote was, that's how they get you. Yep. <laughs> that was my mom, for sure. So, Those drug companies. <laughs> that's how they get you. So in, in a mammogram, is there like a vice boy? Is there somebody that... <laughs> Are you going to apply for the job? Yes. Yeah, guy, somebody has to turn that uh, It's not knob. the doctor that's Let me tell you, it, it ain't that fun, okay? Well, you know, but for being you. the vice boy might be. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I think men have a, the wrong idea of what a mammogram yes, is. They I'm think sure we you do. take off your top and jiggle them around. Yeah, and... yeah. Keep going. <laughs> Should I talk slower? Yes, yes, yes please do. Oh, my oh, goodness. Oh, vice right. We've uh, derailed from our yeah, fourth tad, week. A tad. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, so I have uh, one more chemo tomorrow, and I'm guessing they'll, they won't say, well, you're going to need another. I'm not sure. I no, guess it's I'm, possible. No, we didn't hear that. As no. It, even as an option, right? No, Bob? I don't think so. I think that's He's making it. stuff up again. Sure, why not? Well, you know, trying to fill half an hour here. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, no, so radiation again tomorrow and... So it's our last long day tomorrow. Yes. The greatest thing about the... So we do chemotherapy every Monday and then the and radiation on Monday. And then the rest of the week, it's just radiation. So they're nice short days. Mm -hmm. But that, that Monday is long. It's it's tiring for Bob, and um, I'm looking forward to being finished with that portion of it. Yeah, me too. I can't believe it. Can you? What I'm going to miss is the steroids, though. Ants I, in the pants? Oh, my goodness. You know, because I, I, today, Brown I am, a brown cow. I'm fatigued. <laughs> yeah, you are. I am very tired. Okay. And that's the one, I guess, side effect that I, am, I felt for the last, uh, I don't know, five to seven days. Mm-hmm. And it's when the steroids from Monday wear off by Thursday. Your butt starts dragging. It starts it? dragging. Yep. And now on Sunday, uh, I'm really dragging. Yep. And then tomorrow I get chemo, but I get my steroids before they put the, uh, what was it, Taxol or whatever it is inside me. Yes, there's two drugs, yeah. two poisons yep. that go in there. But he gets those steroids, and then he also, I think we've mentioned this before, he gets an injection of this super powerful Benadryl, and I think that's part of the anti-nausea maybe, I don't know. But he goes almost right to sleep. He sleeps like last week you slept 45 minutes, maybe an hour? I don't know, I was sleeping. In the chair, <laughs> yep. Yeah, on Monday. Yep. Did Deb sleep during mm -hmm. chemo? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They would give her that and an anti-nausea yep. and other stuff just to preventatively. Sure. Mm -hmm. she, yep. ne she was and never so far, nauseous, though. She never... Yeah, he's not I have not it. either. Uh, all of this stuff is working at tip-top shape. I have no, I'm not been sick at all. I have no nausea whatsoever. I would knock on wood, but I'm afraid you'll say, don't hit the table while we're recording. <laughs> <laughs> all right. But, uh, yeah, things are, are, are surprisingly well. I'm... I expected to be frail, uh, bald. Uh, I, I all of this stuff that they had told us about. This is where I expected to be at this time of the treatments. We really imagined the worst mm -hmm. because that's they have to tell you, and we, we we discuss this. I think every week how they have to tell you all the potential. Here's what could happen. Yes. Yeah. So you're not surprised. But look at him. Would you, I wish no. this was live on video so your listeners could see, Bob. You look so great. You look the same. I don't uh, I don't feel any different except for the fatigue, and that's it. I mean, Doesn't he I'm look the still, same? Yeah, exactly the same. I can still eat whatever I want. I can, you He's know, careful. You're careful with after what After uh, last week's uh, uh, steroids on Monday, I played 18 holes of golf the next day. That's I crazy. Was, 
that gets you. And you, you golfed well. I, yeah, I golfed all right. And it, uh, you know, it gives me energy and I'm just, I'm He's surprised. been cheerful, cheerful, cheerful every day. Now, the, the previous week he did have some kind of blue days, but I think that's because that <clears throat> fatigue was starting at the end of the week and we weren't sure what that was. When somebody says you're going to experience fatigue, what does that mean? We're, yeah. I'm tired. I'm tired today. Mm-hmm. You know, but he started to realize some fatigue and got a little bit blue, but it only lasted about a day. Not very and long. And this week he's been just as cheerful, funny, same as ever. Well, now you can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Oh, this is your last week. Yeah, yeah this is. Uh, this is crazy. It's I, crazy. I, it is. It's. I'm quite surprised that it went this. It, it went very fast. Uh, and going through all this, I look back now. I was like, "Geez, that that was a, a fast four weeks." Mm-hmm. And I have uh, a week and a half of radiation left, and of course the one chemo mm-hmm. uh, tomorrow. But and then a week from Wednesday on the twenty fourth of May. Then I you're going to be, be ringing the bells. I get to ring the bell at the radiation center there. So, I'm, will they let me take a little video of that? I'm sure. I, she's, I bet they will. She's become the best friends with everybody oh, there. Oh, I bake so, for them. I bring cookies. So I'm you know. sure you can do whatever. You could probably <laughs> run the radiation machine if you asked them. <laughs> well, no, but I'm afraid I'd miss. You see, I've got that whole thing. I'm fr- I can't believe you asked the doctor, are you sure you're hitting the right spot? <laughs> well, that, it, I was I mean, very serious because he wasn't having any of the things they warned us of. They said every day they ask, do you have any tingling in your hands and feet? Nope. Do you have any nausea? Nope. Nope. Have you fallen? No. That's one of the things we're like, what? Well, Bob I'm said that. I'm guessing you become fatigued. Or you, maybe, you know, uh, maybe dizzy? dizzy, I guess. Who knows? Yeah. But he has nothing. So I'm like, are these drugs working? Is this a placebo? Is he in a study? Which they do. They put you in a study. I think they let you know that. I, <laughs> I, don't, I, should, I don't think, well, I don't Mr. Kavoyan. <laughs> good Joke's news on you. Uh-huh. Yeah. You're growing a second penis. <laughs> Wait. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> So no, it's I'm, just crazy. I don't. I, I marvel every day. And serious, uh, we wrote down for us to. Not, I wrote down so Bob wouldn't forget this. What is it? What's that, honey? About uh, about them. Uh, no, this one, about right poisoning here. me. Yeah, so that they that they hit me with kryptonite every day, but I'm still able to leap tall buildings. See, that's good. He's yeah. a Superman. Yep. That's what I can't. Yep. He's like Captain America or something. Yeah. He did have a weird thing this week where um, they take his blood pressure um, when they when he goes in for chemotherapy on Chemo Monday. On Monday. First thing they do is take all his vitals, draw blood. They send that blood across the street to the lab. <laughs> they have their own lab. We've talked about that. And uh, his blood pressure was high. Not high-ish, but high in the 190s or something like that. Oh, really? One, 170. And she said, uh, are you taking uh, any medicine for this? You should probably call your doctor. Uh, okay. They said it had been ticking up every week. I'm yeah. like, what? He doesn't have high blood pressure. He's no. never been on blood pressure medicine because nope. he's a healthy fella. So they told us um, to call the doctor, which Bob did. I did. Called up uh, my family doctor and uh, told him about this. And he said, well, I can prescribe this for you. I cannot remember medicine names, but it's a high blood pressure medicine. It's a pill. You need to take it to... Uh, Take it once every morning. It should take care of the problem. I had not ordered the, or picked up the pills yet, and Becky took my blood pressure, and it went down to 130. I said, dude, he can even heal his own high blood pressure. It's like, I wonder why it was high. I, here's why I think. I think maybe subconsciously I'm nervous, nervous whenever I go in there. My brother Yale, who you've all heard about at a time or two, my brother Yale says he has... White coat syndrome. My dad have you heard of that? It. Yes, he gets nervous. Yeah, and they get upset coming into a doctor's office because of the white lab coats, I guess. And they always take Yale's blood pressure at the end of the appointment because I think that's what he said. Because if you take it while he's just arrived and everything, he's, he's all, all worked up, worked up and jazzed. Yep. So evidently, Bob can heal his own blood pressure. So I had my daughter-in-law um, come over and do. Uh, a little lesson for me because I know nothing about any nursing. She's an RN. 
She's an RN. Oh, okay. And yeah, I sure. happen to have the blood pressure cuff from my sister Lynn, who just passed away. So we're putting that to good use. Yeah. I'm checking Bob's blood pressure mm-hmm. every day with Lynn's. None of her cuff. clothes would fit me, so I got the blood pressure <laughs> thing. <laughs> Lucky <laughs> you. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's so, a good one. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyhow, um, I started taking the, the. So she showed me how to do it properly. Bob can't cross his legs. Did you know that? You, I didn't know that. I didn't either. People, just so you know, when you get your blood pressure drawn, even if you're at the CVS in the back corner where they have the machine, don't cross your legs. All right. Don't ask me why. I ain't no nurse. But mm-hmm. <laughs> so I started taking it every day, and it's it's normal every day. It's like what, the medicine didn't even have a chance to go into effect. Not yet. And his blood pressure is fine. So whatever it is, Bob Kavoyan has some kind of magic powers. He's a Superman. Well, if I had magic powers, I wouldn't be going through this thing right now. No. So my well, magic it, powers only work in certain areas, apparently. Or do you really have cancer? Is this a cosmic joke? Oh, Is it a conspiracy? Be. I think that would be a really rotten joke. <laughs> yeah, that would be a really... I don't think that would, would be yeah. a good no. To go through something like this, no, and that's not funny at all. But it is no. good to know. I think we're helping young men who are about to go to a prom. They could tell their date, <laughs> look, if you cross your legs, uh-huh. your blood pressure is going to spike. Uh-huh. Right. That's oh, up careful. to you. Just be careful. Just be careful. Oh, Better uncross okay. them. <laughs> that's, that's very inappropriate, but hilarious. I'm just saying. Uh-huh. That's oh. what it's all about. The I whole point have, uh, of this is to learn, right? Yes. I feel like I'm learning. I'm trying to share this experience, and so far, what I thought was going to be a horrible experience <laughs> has been okay. And we thought by now, we're doing the, the uh, week four, correct? Yes. We just finished week four. We start week five tomorrow. I thought that Bob was going to be frail and not be able to even sit in the chair to do the podcast, sit at the table like he is. I mean, he's just a regular guy. Mm-hmm. We had one, well, we'll talk about that later. The goal of getting downtown. Oh, okay. Well, go ahead and mention the goal. Okay. So our son, Joey, the youngest, has just graduated, summa cum laude, let me add, uh, from law school. And when we got the diagnosis about Bob, our, one of my first thoughts was, oh, no, we won't be able to go down to graduation. Oh, no. What will that be like? And so they scheduled fluids for Bob to get extra uh, IV fluids on the days leading up to graduation Mm -hmm. and bob was able to just go i don't need no stinking fluids he canceled them we had them thursday and he canceled dehydrated no No, no. he's drinking like a fish floating i'll tell you that Uh, but uh yeah i canceled the friday and saturday fluids because i was feeling great he felt so great so we went down yesterday right Mm -hmm. saturday was the graduation parking was icky and bad but uh and we did have to walk a bit of a distance and bob got a little bit tired that was the only thing he got a little tired yeah. by the end of the day he was kind of beat but then i mean but then he came home and that's ate. my everyday routine i become fatigued at, as the day goes on and it just happened that uh, i got a little tired of walking over that's there it. And walking out and as we were driving home i said honey you you haven't had any protein for a while because that's my job and um I said, what, do you want me to cook something? What trips your trigger right now? What are you hungry for? And he goes, I'd really like the kernel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's protein, man. That's protein, baby. So, so we pulled through, got some fried chicken. He downed it. He ate like a champ. Yeah. I mean, he's just, he's doing everything I've asked him to do. And what I'm asking him to do are things that the nurses have asked us to do. And I just write him and make him. So once you're done, is it Friday or Wednesday? It's a week from Wednesday. Okay, so you have what? I have eight. Eight more. Eight radiations and okay. one chemo. So when you're done, will you still have to do protein? And I mean, is that regimen? Well, we'll I believe eight? so. We'll okay. talk to the doctors about that in our annual or weekly meeting on okay. Wednesday. Uh, you know, where, where we talk about they're missing the spot. Yes, uh, where I challenge the doctor <laughs> about his know-how. <laughs> Let me tell you, Doc, tell you. I'm an expert in like, a lot of things. Uh-huh. According to Bob, that's not the first time you've said, are you sure you're hitting the right spot? <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. Okay, I'm just saying. Okay, yeah, here uh-huh. I am with Bob and Wit. What yep, did I yeah. expect? Well, yep. so you knew what you are getting into. Yes, I did. Uh-huh, so uh, now... Um, we don't know about post-treatment. Okay. I just wondered I about that. I assume, because we need his weight to stay up. 
um, when he has his operation, which will be six to eight weeks after okay. afterward yeah. the treatment. They still have to operate on him. So, so when will they tell you? Like, is it six weeks, eight weeks? Well, I think after uh, uh, between four and six weeks after my radiation is complete, they will bring me in for a CT scan okay. and see if and all look. of the scar tissue has healed. If it hasn't, then there'll be another couple Push weeks. Push it back. Okay. But if it has healed, then they'll schedule the surgery and we'll go from there. Great. So I'm not sure. And that's a whole other level ask. of of podcast, I think, at that point. Well, and right? you were saying so. last time that you were getting a little bit of a scratchy throat. Do yes. you still still hang in there? Okay. Still there, but uh, it's Didn't... nothing that bothers me. Okay, good. I mean, it doesn't uh, hinder my eat, my eating. It doesn't good. hinder swallowing at all. He's more careful. He's more careful. I'd say. Meaning, right? I just have to chew down my food. You know, make it a lot easier. And uh, what really helps, and we brought this up a couple of episodes ago, about. THC. What does that stand for? I don't know. <laughs> Something uh, it's dirty. The High Company. I don't know. <laughs> I think it, it is. is uh huh. <laughs> and I have uh, I have taken a liking a liking to the uh, THC of the herb, and it's a uh, it's actually a gummy. Okay. Uh huh. Because the herb is a little difficult to inhale with a sore throat. Mm hmm. But the uh, my sweet spot is five milligrams, and that takes away all pain. Really? It's all gone. Even mm. the sore throat I have, everything's gone, and I'm hungry. Is that a one-a-day deal? Mm. Uh, yeah, usually one. I mean, maybe. In the evening, I don't know he enough takes about it in the evening. Maybe one uh, in the afternoon, depending. But So keep in mind, he is. Bob has to eat every roughly two or three hours. It's about... He's supposed to eat before he's hungry. That's my job is to say, look, it's been two hours. I know you're not hungry, but it's time for some protein. So he's got to have, you know, whatever, cottage cheese, cheese sticks, salami, a boiled egg, some, some, some high protein food. And in order for him to feel hungry or if his throat is feeling a little tight, he has a little sweet a little, little green apple. A little green apple gummy. Let's go bite the head off the bear, right? Uh -huh, let's do it. But you and know what? It works so effectively. And I'm not a drug user, nope. never have been. Uh, but it really wants, makes me want to get up on a soapbox and, me and too, holler at people who say this is not medically effective because it is, and Bob is living proof of that. Many other people are as well. But um, most of the people who are, say, advocating for legalizing THC or pot or whatever um, are little hippie people and nobody's going to pay them any never, no mind, you know. With me, I want to say, look, you guys, look what it, this has done what for this man. What it's done. Yep. Yeah, but also the, uh, they prescribed three medications for me for anti-nausea and to numb my throat in case I had tough time swallowing. Mm -hmm. And those medications, uh, I think, came to about $220. Okay. Cha-ching. Cha-ching. And then the, uh, um, the gummies. Oh, those have gone unused, might yes. I add. Mm -hmm. I haven't used those at all. The gummies for 10 gummies in a bag is $10. And... And I have... That tells you something. That's, so, that's the only money that I've spent as far as and is a medication gummy, that I've used. Is it 10 milligrams for a full? Well, you can get them in different ones, but I got the 10 milligram bag. And so you just do half. And cut, it in uh, half. cut one in half. Okay. It's like a little orange slice kind of look. It's got sugar on the outside. A little triangle. All right. It's kind of cute. You know, I'm not going to try them. I'm not interested, but it's really making a difference for Bob. And it's not like he's not sitting around the house laughing or, you know, hey, man. Oh, oh, oh yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, back in the 70s, yes, Bob was quite the experienced yeah. pot user. Yeah, yeah. But this is a whole different use, and it's necessary for him. And it, it quite it bothers works. me that it it's not works. available to your average person who doesn't have a contact that we will rena uh, remain so, nameless here. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. But it, I'm, I was a little skeptical myself. I figured, all right, give it a shot. And We were very skeptical. It, uh, it does the job. Great. really does. And I would recommend it to anyone 
if, if they can find it, that's the thing. This. They have to drive to Michigan. Or the one thing, yes, you have to go to state. I took them all while I was out of state. Yes, it was legal when, when you it took was, them. When I took uh, them, it was he, legal. We drive up to Michigan every day. Every day I drive to Michigan, mm -hmm. take a gummy and drive home. Sometimes Illinois. Yeah, Illinois is also convenient. Gives a new meaning to going to Carolina in my mind, <laughs> doesn't it? <laughs> it truly is. But the, the oh. one thing is, <clears throat> excuse me, it's made uh, my appetite... Uh, Continue to be strong. Can, it's oh, strong. man, you guys. It's so strong I've gained... Now 14 pounds. Are you serious? I am serious. Yes, look at him. Healthy. And I had to get new pants. Really? <laughs> he really did. I had to get new he pants. New britches. <laughs> so I found, uh, I found these great jeans, and I'll give them a plug because they're great. We're not spo they're not no, sponsoring us. No, they're not sponsoring us because it cost me more than uh, the medication. Hey, did you get fat? <laughs> Try these jeans. Yeah, here's some fat jeans for you. <laughs> what but are they're it? not. They're just normal jeans. They're but called they... um, Muggsy, M-U-G-S-Y. Muggsy? Stand Muggsy? up and model them for no, Whit. No, I'm not going to stand up and model <laughs> for <laughs> Whit. What are you talking Good about? Good God. Good boys. Lord. What? You boys. Here, take your dress off and show. you can wear yeah, my yeah, pants. Yeah, you can yeah, model them for us. Good God. Okay, what so they're, uh, they're the most comfortable jeans I've How'd ever worn. How you know to buy them? I just looked up online. Fatjeans.com. And I stumbled across <laughs> these Muggsy comfortable jeans. I was looking for comfortable jeans. But they're beautiful. They're not like what you think, um, like an old man and whatever is going to throw on some jeans. It's not like that. It's they're, not like the Michelin man wearing blue jeans. No, no, no they're not at all. great jeans. No, and they they're really stylish. Are. And he bought one pair to check it out. And then he bought another pair. And then he bought another pair. I'll let you know. They're pricey. Yeah. But okay, worth weren't it. they like around a hundred bucks? Yeah, but worth it. Well made and yes, oh okay. yeah, yeah, beautiful. They, and he got different colors and different weights and all kinds of stuff. He's very different excited weights. about them, like a, a fabric weight. Oh, uh, I see. Yeah. You got lightweight, summery. They have one called Cool Max, which is you can wear long pants on a hot day and it's just as comfortable. I need as can to be. check those out. Just yeah, of they're that. cotton though. Mm -hmm. They're not like a nylon or some no, weird. No, it's a combination. Yeah, but Cotton it's not and. like a stretchy sweatpant or anything. But it is stretchy because when I sit down, I'm comfortable. You got lots of room. I got a lot of room. <laughs> we'll be right back with the view. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking stretch pants and fabrics and <laughs> outfits. Oh, outfits. Yes. Bob said boys don't use the word no, outfit. No, you never. don't use the word no. outfit. That's, I guess, no. no, I guess not. Mm -hmm. but, I mean, I've never said that in my life. Like, what outfit should I wear? What do you say? Let's say you're going to an event. I'll ask, what is the dress code? Oh, okay. I mean, is it casual? And you and Bob don't call each other and go, No. What are you wearing down to the zoo? Do these jeans make my life look tell you that, I will tell you this. I went to a celebration of life yesterday, mm -hmm. and I did call the organizer and say, Is this a sport coat? Ah, uh, yeah. You know. Okay, yeah. What is the protocol? Because the worst thing you want to do is show up yes. inappropriate. Yep. But, right. Um, so our friend Mark Patrick, I said, you know, it's at the White River Yacht Club. It's open air. Mm -hmm. It's going to be 80 degrees. Right. I said, I think I'm just going to wear golf pants and a golf shirt. Sure. He goes, you're not wearing a sport coat? I go, no. He goes, we're honoring the dead. I said, <laughs> I would rather honor the dead comfortably. Yes. <laughs> Okay. I'd I mean, rather do chemo comfortably. Yes. Okay. Did yes. Mark wear a sport coat? No, he was kind of funning with me. I yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Although he did have a long sleeve shirt on. Well, respect, Whit. I had a golf shirt and several of our friends uh, were Hawaiian shirts. Nothing wrong with that? The guy we were honoring would have preferred that, right? I'm sure. So anyway, now that we've got the fashion... <laughs> Well, I wanted to go... The fashion portion of I the I wanted podcast. to go back to the, the heavy honey chat because... We had a, a very funny moment when I was, I'm always writing Bob about eating and yep. eating and are you gaining weight? Are you still gaining weight? And he said. What did I say? About oh. your. Hmm. Oh, I said, yeah, I'm gaining weight because I can't see my junk. <laughs> it's, it's, the belly is way out there. <laughs> well, it's not way out there. Yes, but it it's, is. It's a, <laughs> well, an, uh, far enough out where I can't see my junk. <laughs> That has to be really far out. It is. It's unbelievable. <laughs> you know, as men, we know how to pee in the pitch black. So seeing it is not that necessary. No, it isn't. Oh. 
Well, uh, nah. but he's been feeling great. Good. He's been looking yes. great. He's been eating like you cannot believe. See, I, I've seen you. I'm eating like I'm going to the chair. Chair seven to nine. Times. I asked that uh, today. What our grandson, one of his favorite meal of all time was, and he's seven. He couldn't come up with it. But and, and uh, someone said, "Well, what would your last request be if you were in prison on death row?" And to a seven-year-old. No, he, he asked me. <laughs> oh, okay. And I said, well, I'd probably go with a great big bowl of chili <laughs> and let those guys deal with the yes. mess afterwards. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, you know you must have said this out, out of my hearing. I, uh, yes. I missed that, You Jim. were busy doing Did something else. Did he think else. it was funny? Yes, absolutely. See, of course that's oh funny. Oh mm-hmm. No, I was going to say I've seen you seven to nine times in the last four to five weeks. The thing that amazes me is your attitude. Well, you just seem like he's Bob. so great. Yeah. Well, I was worried. I mean, cause I this, was worried as well. This is a heavy thing to go through. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we're not we're not downplaying the severity of what you're going. No, through. No, 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 no. no. We're, we're please don't misinterpret big, yes. To yes. anybody who's listening. No, don't don't misinterpret. But, but you've been fortunate that they caught it early and the treatments have been. They've been and reasonable. Very and, easy. Yeah. Let me toot my own horn by saying I think it helps to have a partner in it monitoring all of the things they say to do because mm-hmm. if you're alone in this it must be doubly hard it'd be awful it's hard enough for bob to just remember to eat remember to drink and he has me just to remind uh, me not to just remind him but to have the food in the house and cook the food and make the food this morning he was still sleeping and i was a little bit it was just a quiet house and it's mother's day right. and so i thought well what can i do this morning that's quiet but keep me busy so I baked a cake. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm, I'm, I added, I replaced some of the flour with protein powder. And I added an extra egg. Because in my mind, anything I can do to add more protein, even to treats, will make a big difference for Bob. Because they said protein, protein, protein. They're not saying sugar, fat, any, they want calories, yes, but the main key is protein so that as his body is working in there, it's not going to take away his muscles. And that's what we need. It was to keep that muscle going. And he's got it. Most of it's fat. (laughs) Well, but I mean. It's not though. You think it is, but it's not. But I'm huge. You know, no, I, you're not. He's not huge. I will ask a question. I think many of your fans would want to know. Extra crispy at the Colonel? Uh, no, today? regular. Just original. regular recipe. He okay. likes original. Because some like people, the that's their weakness is extra crispy. No, not a fan of that. I and like he, the. He got the uh, original. I like all the spices. And he got an eight-piece set or whatever you call a set. <laughs> right. So no, but you. So the, he can I have got cold the chicken. Eight-piece outfit. <laughs> yes, you did. Yes. <laughs> But he wants, to, <laughs> he wants to have cold chicken, so tonight he'll have cold chicken. Oh, see, chicken. there's nothing better. I agree. Yeah. Oh, if you got the right skin on that stuff, oh, that is just... And the edit. colonel does it right. Yes, he does. So, but you said uh, last time you're not a fan of mashed potatoes, right? No. Oh, but... But I tried some. Not, not bad. bad. With some gravy the on gravy it. gravy makes almost everything Gravy tolerable. does yeah. a lot of magical so things. So I did buy some gravy because, okay. of course, with, I overbought, and I'm sure we've covered this topic before, I overbought all the uh, soft things, not knowing that Bob would still, at the end of week four... Be able to eat anything, Well, he's right? still mm-hmm. eating regular food. So my our fridge, freezer, and pantry are full of peanut butter and cottage cheese and... Um, Puddings and all the soft things. The soft things I thought I would have to eat yeah. in order to swallow. I made the I most mean, delicious homemade chocolate pudding, and we had a bowl of it one evening. And then I ended up rinsing it down the sink because he didn't need. Didn't need to eat. He's eating no. ice cream with every nut in the world in it. It's like some kind of magic graters. It's a graters snack, ice cream. Midnight snack. Called midnight thing. snack. It's and got there's another pretzels one called and nuts and hungry hippo, which I'm a big fan of. Because <laughs> you are. Because I'm, I am a hippo. <laughs> but, but he's eating ice cream that's not smooth. Is what my my point is. I overstocked with all the smooth, and now I'm I'm stuck with it unless he happens to have a. Unless things turn this week, uh, I don't see. But I don't see it happening for it. He's so far in. I I don't see it happening, and it's hilarious to look in our, in our pantry and the things that I'm making for him. I'm not making smooth foods right now. I bought a brand new, beautiful blender to make all these protein shakes. <laughs> we made one shake. We've made one only as an experiment to try it, and we haven't made another. Interesting. Because yep. we haven't needed it, so no. I'm prepared 
for if we do We're need ready, it. We're ready. Man, that blender is cute. I don't cute. know if it's going to... See, I wonder if this weight will make you more buoyant in your pool, or will you be <laughs> Brian Jones? <laughs> I, I see a little Brian Jones I in me right there. Right to the bottom. Right to the, right right to the, the bottom. bottom. Oh, Where's Bob? My. There uh-huh. he is down there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh-huh. I, it's just it's just remarkable. It is completely remarkable. So I'm, I'm still... I'm thrilled. I still don't believe it. I know. I really I don't. don't. I did have a fail I wanted to mention. Because, oh, is this the steak? Yes. Okay. Oh, you knew. When I said the word fail, you knew what I was talking about. <laughs> wow. So I, I am a pretty decent cook. I like to cook. She's a very good cook. And I love to bake and all this. Well, I also love, in the spring, hunting morel mushrooms mm-hmm. in our woods. It's one of my passions. Oh, my gosh. Well, this year, I could not give one shit about, I mean, one care about hunting mushrooms. You know what? Out of the three of us, she's the only one who's cussed on this podcast. I know, I'm podcast. Bad. You know that? Comma, thus far. <laughs> <laughs> it's so early. <laughs> we received this diagnosis right about the, the height of mushroom season, yeah, okay. and I didn't go out, and I didn't care, and I wasn't interested because I wanted to literally spend every second with Bob. I, I didn't know what was to come. So uh, our youngest, Joey, loves hunting mushrooms as well. So the other day, he was out with his son, Andrew, and said, let's go for a walk. Let's go out in the woods. We're going to go out and look for mushrooms. Well, we found a few, and Joey found enough for us to make, for me to make this Morel whiskey cream sauce that mm, is to Which is out of this for. world. So we go to the meat market, our favorite place, and we bought what's called a Hoosier ribeye. They're fantastic. They're very thin. They're made for a ribeye sandwich. Oh, so okay. I thought, shoot, he can eat a Hoosier ribeye. Mm-hmm. Man, let's see. I don't want him to have to stand at the grill because he might get tired. So I'll do it my little cast iron skillet way. <laughs> it was so bad. Really? It was so mm-hmm. bad mm-hmm. that I told Bob, I'm so thankful we don't have company. I could not have served this. It looked like prison grade beef. Speaking of going looked, to the chair, it looked like a death row steak. It looked like did, a did steak. Did you get steak. dribble up into nothing? No, thing? it was gray. It didn't sear because I have, a, I have a an See, induction cooktop that I'm new you, to. When you get a gray horse, <laughs> you get, get gray, gray meat. meat. Ooh, wow. Well, so yeah. this induction cooktop didn't work properly with my cast iron, and I didn't know it because it was the first time I've tried the searing. And I'm good with cast iron, man. But I'm also best with cast iron on a gas stove. Mm -hmm. So I was using the induction. Lo and behold, I didn't know it. The stove goes off if if the skillet is too Too hot. hot. And I didn't know it. And I'm like, what's happening with this steak? So this wasn't a cooking. It's a mechanical failure. You, it, you, was you, it was me. I, I yeah, should I mean, have done it, it differently. Oh, I, wouldn't have I should have done it on the grill. But yeah. I, we ate it anyhow. And he choked it down. And it was actually, the, the meat itself was tasty enough. It was way too done, and it was a humongous disappointment. But you couldn't but, see the steak if you covered it in morel gravy. But the gravy morel on. gravy yes. was the, the whole Saved savior it. of the yep. whole thing, and he still ate it because he had to get his protein. Yep. There were like six grams of protein in that hunk of meat, and he's so getting it. So you're not it, damning so. a Hoosier ribeye. You're no, just saying the Hoosier, I no love prep. Hoosier, Hoosier ribeye. ribeye on the okay. grill. Right. Oh, baby, like a minute aside pretty oh, much. That doesn't or, take long. had I done it properly or on a gas stove, okay. it would have been spectacular. But it was a fail on my own part for trying something new when I'm trying to feed this man food that not only tastes good but looks beautiful because it has to be um, appetizing. He's he's being forced to eat when he's not hungry, so it needs to look good, yeah. right? Well, not okay. I suppose. If it I mean, tastes good, I don't. Would care. you eat a prison looking piece of meat? If I was meat? hungry and it tasted good, I'd eat it. I wouldn't. Yeah. See, that's the thing about guys; they'll eat. Yeah, I just don't about know. Yes. I don't know, but I it was just a lesson learned. It and is interesting. You just said, what, "What do you want to eat today?" KFC. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he did not ask for me to cook. That's a I fact. Think I have the courage to cook it. for us. Thanks. Oh yeah. Thanks. Thanks. I, just, I want to bring up something that we've noticed in the past four weeks. Tell me, of baby. Traveling on hospital grounds. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of bad drivers. Fact. A lot of bad drivers out there. And we can see them from upstairs as we look out the window. And, you know, people are going to and from hospitals. We don't know why. Some are there for an emergency. Others are there when they found out they had cancer. Uh, the online. nurses even mentioned it. And they say, yeah, they can see crashes. Wrecks all the time. People, 
people are not concentrating on their driving. They're concentrating on an ill spouse. That's my theory. A, anyway. uh, you know, a cancer diagnosis. Their heads are elsewhere. They're running stop signs, crashing into each other quite often, evidently. And it's, you know, you, you sit there and you go, what is this jerk Get doing? Out of my and you way. realize that guy probably just found out he has cancer. He just found just, out his wife. His head spinning and his ears yeah, are ringing. Exactly. And, and he can't. So what I want to say is if you're traveling on hospital property in a car, whoever is around you in a car, give them a Mercy. break. Give them I mercy. Just mercy. Be, and drive defensively is what you're yes. saying. Well, really, I'm just saying grant them be kind. Yeah, mercy. It's, it's a free pass, in my opinion. Oh, there should be no road rage in a hospital parking lot nope. or on a hospital road. Because thinking back to our first day, Bob. Oh, man. We I'd, were so oh, stunned. Absolutely. Just panicked, wide-eyed, flushed. Our ears are ringing. And no, it, it w- we would have been a really you know, bad drivers at that moment. And if someone could be merciful and kind and go, Hey, sorry, sorry. Well, sorry. And, and, and there are probably a higher uh, percentage of elderly. Oh, absolutely. Drivers at, yeah. at a hospital parking lot. True. And, Oh, I'm not giving them a break. <laughs> I will tell you this. If you see anyone wearing those X-Men sunglasses. Yes. Oh yeah. Yes. You see Step on your brakes. Let them pass. They can't yeah. see. Just exactly. let them go. <laughs> Their eyes have been dilated or yep. whatever. Yeah. But it was a good lesson for us. It's, I, yeah, it's never something I think that uh, yeah. anyone who's on a hospital ground should grant everyone uh, yep. a little mercy when yep. it comes to I driving. Agree. We saw it. There was a, somebody ran a stop sign and the nurse made comment, boy, we sure see a lot of wrecks here. And that's when I said, I bet it's because they are stunned, stunned yep. Yep. for this or that reason. Because there's not a lot of good things that happen at no, a hospital. Someone could have died. Except for birth. Well, yes. that's a good point. But yeah, even then, you might not be driving well. That's true. Yeah. But you're hurrying mean, to get, yeah. get there or be excited. And you're there to get fixed. And a lot of people, are, their heads are elsewhere. So, so. that is a great lesson yeah. for the people listening. It's just listening. something I noticed that being yeah. there every day on, on hospital grounds, it's yeah. something we've noticed. And it's, I another, thought I'd just pass yeah. it on. Another place at a hospital, and you guys haven't had to avail this, that's not a feel-good party atmosphere, is your hospital cafeteria. Yeah. Oh. Wow. Oh. Well, we, we haven't been. In we there, haven't been there oh. yet, but uh, it, I know there's reservations for us in uh, July. In probably. July. Yes. Okay. So <laughs> a party of two. Well, it'll probably be a party of one. Party of one. For you one. See, one to go, worse. please. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna be the lady in the corner, looking panicked and yeah. oh, trying my. to find something without mayonnaise on it. <laughs> Well, good luck, well, that's right. You don't that's, like anything. No, like that. I don't like any okay. tuna salads or All anything. Right. You know. Okay. So. Well, I think we've uh, summarized our week four. Now we look forward to the final week yes. uh, of chemo and radiation. Yes. And I hope it goes as smoothly as it has the last four weeks. And I thank you guys for joining us. And oh, I, my gosh, yes. I forgot to say that I, the Bob and Cancer Show, I have a partner that I hate. And I want to kill him. Yes. So... That's why we don't have a jingle. <laughs> Wait, I'm available. I can sing. I can still sing. Let's yeah, do it's it. It's hard to find a rhyme for partner. Yes. So. Oh, Wit's uh, going to spend the whole week trying to come up with a rhyme no, now. No. Oh. I'm still thinking about Bob's last meal and, yep. and uh-huh. telling his grandson. <laughs> yep, you want a big bowl oh. of chili. That's what you want. Gosh. Let the guards clean it up. Oh, well, Absolutely. thank you all out there. Uh, for tuning in too and sticking with Bob yeah. through this journey. Thank you all and happy Mother's Day, my yes. love. Thank you. And uh, we'll see you all next week. This is the Bob and Cancer Show. I hate my partner. I'm going to kill him. You've been listening to the Bob and Cancer Show. Tune into our next episode as we continue to follow Bob's journey. Bob Kaboyan appears courtesy of marijuana. Marijuana, it's not for everyone, but it works for Bob. With marijuana, food will taste better, music will sound better, you'll forget your troubles, and music will sound better. This is Whit Grayson speaking.